this is for everybody, not just those of us in Montana. In Montana right now, the governor of our state has virtually no accountability as to his executive orders and disaster orders. When the legislature put that provision in the Montana Code Annotated back in the 70s, they did not, unfortunately, draft legislation that would allow them, the legislative branch, which is the people's branch, to have a check and balance over the governor's directives. So that wasn't really an issue for all those years until Corona comes along in 2020. And we have a wannabe tyrant in the governor's mansion. So his emergency orders, his order, his disaster order, which are two separate ones, have no check and balance in the legislature. Our Montana legislature only meets every other year, which is good overall. It would be wonderful if the Congress in Washington, D.C. only met about once every 10 years. That would be, that would be more than enough. So normally it's good, but in this particular case, it's not good because now the legislature does not have an ability in the off session to pass legislation checking the governor's uncontrolled power. So that's one of the reasons why there has been no accountability to our governor through all this pandemic. Many states in the country, it's very similar. The legislature wrote legislation years and years ago, giving all this executive power to the governor, but they failed to put in a safety net, checks and balances by the legislator in the legislation. Others of you, wherever you are, your legislature meets every year. And so there's no excuse in those states why your legislature during the course of the last six months, if they were in session, why did they not meet and pass legislation checking the power of your governor with these unconstitutional, tyrannical executive orders that many of these governors have put in place. Now, in the last couple of weeks, we've got some really, really good Supreme Court, no, yeah, Supreme Court rulings in two states, the state of Pennsylvania, and just a few days ago, the state of Michigan. And, and the judges, the highest court, the Supreme Court, of those states has ruled in both instances that the governors of those states, the rulings, the executive orders that they, that they signed were totally, unequivocally, absolutely unconstitutional. So these are two major precedents for freedom-loving people around the country to be able to use in their own states. And we are trying to get judicial activity going here in the state of Montana for the same, for the same purpose. But our legislature will convene after this election next January. So it's going to be imperative. We are going to watch and we're going to lobby our legislator, 
legislature hard that they need to strike down the language in Title 10 and Title 50 that have given the governor all of this unchecked power and replace them with legislative oversight over the governor's emergency orders and disaster orders. And they also need to put a provision in there that allows the legislature to hold the governor accountable during the off session season as well. Liberty Fellowship, this is going to be a heavy priority for our activist efforts during the legislative session next, next year. It's imperative that we put the legislature back in charge of the Capitol in Helena, Montana, not the governor. The legislative body is designed by the founders to be the most powerful body of government in a Republican form of government. Right now, that's not the case. It's executive and judicial, and the legislature has almost reached a state of irrelevance. We've got to make the legislature not only relevant, but assume its place uh, and, and position of responsibility in, to, in this state. And so that's going to be high priority for our, for our activity next session. Currently, the governor has zero accountability to the legislature. And the legislature, of course, is the voice of the people. Now, here's what I learned that I didn't know. Listen carefully. I was not aware that in Montana law, and you have to, <laughs> you have to look to find it, but we found it. In Montana law, the governor's emergency orders automatically expire after 30 days. And the disaster orders end after 45 days, which expired months ago. So why are we still operating under emergency orders? Why are the counties still operating emergency orders under the state emergency orders? Why are they doing that? They ended months ago. The emergency orders that the entire state has been operating under since that 45-day period terminated have been operating under a clause in the Montana law that allows the Montana executive order to stay in effect as long as the President of the United States has a federal emergency order in place. In other words, the executive order in Montana is operating under the executive order from Donald Trump in Washington, D.C., and has been ever since that 45-day period was exhausted. You folks that are watching in the other states, I urge you to check your state constitutions and your code annotated laws and search this for yourself and see how many of, you, of the states across the country have similar laws built in to their states. 
In other words, to end these tyrannical executive orders in the state and the counties of Montana, all that needs to happen is for President Trump to rescind his executive order. I am sick and tired of politicians, including Donald Trump, standing up in front of the American people and pretending that they are against these forms of tyranny. And he gets up and he criticizes all of these lockdowns and so forth that he helped create back months ago. And under, under his executive order are still operating. Mr. President, if you want to help free the American people from these tyrannical lockdowns and conduct of these state governors and local health boards, etc., you can do it with a stroke of a pen. Rescind your infernal executive order in Washington, D.C., and help free the states. Now, all of you Trump lovers out there that keep defending the president, oh, you know, this is all the Democrats, this is all the Democrats. No, it's not all the Democrats. The Republicans have been as much on board of this travesty as Democrats have for the last six months. And now we find out that the state of Montana's executive order only exists because President Trump's executive order is still in place. If he signed an executive order tomorrow rescinding his executive order for emergency declaration, the emergency declaration in Montana would automatically end right then. You didn't know that, did you? No, I didn't know that either. But the underlying purpose of the emergency order is not for our safety. It's never been for our safety. It's to authorize and facilitate the transfer of trillions of dollars from the federal treasury into the hands of the state and local governments, big businesses, and organizations loyal to the Fed, and of course, and especially, to the big banks, which receive the vast majority of the money. Follow the money. This is not about public health and safety. This is about feeding the beast and giving federal tax dollars, trillions of dollars, to big banks, big businesses, and other entities loyal to the Fed. This is a giant Ponzi scheme by the Congress and the President of the United States of America. Wake up, people. It doesn't matter who the President is, what counts is the people's hearts in this country who love freedom, who understand freedom, and who are willing to stand for freedom. <laughs>